let's yeah let's uh, try now uh so um as I said, I apologize in advance regarding the iPad because I have been teaching using um, document camera. It works very well, gives one more uh, space and so on. Um, so again, it's a pleasure for the, to be here, uh, to be back to uh, Charleston and to see you all. And uh, I thank the organizers for the invitation, um, especially for uh, Ben's day. Uh, so to mention, you know, just a, a few things um, regarding my, you know, connection in a way to Ben, uh, it turns out that we, there is a little interesting, you know, detail uh, that we figured out uh, later. So uh, Ben's paper that came from his thesis has my advisor in, in title. My paper that came from my thesis has his advisor in the title. So that's kind of, you know, interesting uh, background. Uh, unfortunately, we did not have chance to really start working together until recently. Um, it's just, you know, spring 2019, finally, we got the you know, chance to start discussing things. And uh, Ben was really interested in going back to those topics because uh, partially of his work with um, Mi Song at that time on categorification of uh, Verma modules and projectives. And uh, some things that, you know, I was doing uh, was using, you know, some explicit calculations with something that I was doing with my students and also just using in my old work was, you know, really having, you know, a tensor product of Verma modules also with uh, in the paper with uh, uh, Chari and Moura on branch crystals and so on. So the idea was to get back to those roots uh, and uh, look at this topic together, uh, starting really actively in the fall of 2019. Uh, unfortunately, there was not really you know, time to work on, on that. So since it's Wednesday, I thought it appropriate uh, to discuss you know, these topics and uh, the you know, uh, background of it. And uh, at the end, if there is time uh, to address, you know, the connections with presently and to go over, you know, uh, his uh, results that are uh, useful for this. So the topic that I am um, mentioning is um, ab about completions. Completion was defined by Enright, uh, Ben's uh, advisor, on the category I, which was also defined by Enright. Uh, he used it for constructing fundamental series representations for real semi-simple Lie algebra. Uh, and um, then I believe a year after that, uh, Deodar gave explicit construction of completion, which made it possible for him to solve uh, the problem regarding uh, braid group uh, action. Uh, and then I believe uh, in a few years later, um, I think in uh, 82, Joseph extended the notion to uh, category O. Uh, and uh, I'm seeing lately there are some um, there is some new interest uh, in the topic, especially uh, regarding, you know, categorification things and so on. Um, so um, uh, my own interest was in a way to combine it with crystal bases at that time and, you know, defined, you know, completion of a crystal lattice and so on. Uh, but I'll focus more on things that are closer, you know, to Ben, so we are not going to be discussing, you know, um, crystal bases, you know, this time. Okay, so let's Let's try this iPad and let me just really quickly then introduce notation since uh, we are a bit running out of time. So, um, and I'm not going to write everything down. I'll be speaking in, in you know, um, so regarding because of time. Uh, so let G be finite dimensional semi-simple Lie algebra over C just for, you know, for simplicity, you know, today. And uh, we have usual, um, root space decomposition. Yeah, I'm not writing the nicest with this on the iPad. I'm not really used to it. All right. <coughs> 
let I be the um, set of the dinking uh, uh, of the nodes of the dinking diagram corresponding to uh, this Li algebra of rank uh, L and um, let um, uh, phi, I'm trying to rush up. So maybe I, I'm just thinking, should I just skip it all together? But I, I do need notation. Uh, so uh, phi plus, of course, positive system. Uh, then look at the Chevalier basis, E, phi, F, phi. And uh, nilpotent subalgebras corresponding to phi plus and opposite. And then uh, simple roots corresponding co roots, root lattice weight lattice, dominant weights. So I'm just writing down the notation uh, and nothing more than that. Um, while group and uh, simple reflection corresponding to simple root uh, alpha i. Uh, so for any uh, subalgebra a of g, uh, enveloping algebra will be as usual denoted by u of a. Okay. So let's look at the definition at category I on which Enright uh, defined completion. So category um, I consists of G modules. Are you guys able to read this? Yeah. I'm really feeling uncomfortable for my handwriting on this iPad. <laughs> okay, so... Um, this is the category of G modules that consists of weight modules. Uh, UQ minus, oops, forget about Q. You see, this is the habit because of uh, the quantum struck. U minus uh, G action on M is torsion free. And also M is U plus finite. Which is the same thing as saying that EI act locally uh, nilpotent. Um, yeah, this is not very readable. Okay. So let's fix I that corresponds to simple root alpha I. And uh, weight space is defined as usual. Uh, MEI stands for EI invariance, so those vectors that are killed by EI. And M lambda EI will be intersection of the two. Okay. So I pulled this with mine and I it off. All right. Uh, so now once that we have that uh, notation out of the way, we are going to say that the module M in the category I is complete with respect to I if for every positive integer, uh, fi raised to n plus first power, which of course goes from um, bait space n, uh, but we are looking at the ei invariance to m minus n minus two to ei is bijective. Of course, uh, here, because uh, these modules uh, have um, torsion-free U minus action. That means Fi is anyway injective. So this is the same thing as focusing on it being surjective. Uh, now a module N in the category I is said to be complete, uh, completion, sorry, completion of M with respect to I, provided that the module N is complete that uh, M is embedded into N and their quotient is Fi finite. Just 
to say integrable. Okay, you can already see here that by fixing I, we are truly focusing on uh, SL2 subalgebra. So that's why uh, people say that about talk about uh, SL2 nature of uh, completion. And of course, that will bring the interesting you know, question what happens with uh, successive applications of uh, reflections. Okay, now uh, going back to uh, definition of a module you know, to be complete, you know, one also you know, easily sees is that you know that's equivalent to saying that uh, for every you know positive integer you know uh, n uh, that this is the same as whenever we have an inclusion into m this comes together with a unique map from m n into m you know the reason being of course because the only non-trivial maps between verma modules are uh, inclusions so that is very obvious and regarding you know sl2 case the verma modules n i am denoting uh, by m lambda verma module with highest weight uh, lambda of course uh, the universal highest weight module uh, of uh, that weight uh, now for sl2 case verma modules uh, m lambda when, where lambda is not an integer are complete while for integers uh, their uh, m n is complete if and only if n is greater or equal minus one. And the completion of minus n minus two is actually mn, which is very obvious from the definition, but you know, just to mention it out. So uh, NRATE showed that every module in category I has a completion with respect to particular uh, color, and then any two uh, completions are naturally isomorphic. Uh, so it is justified that you denote completion with respect to I of module M by CI uh, of M. Uh, now, regarding uh, general G case for uh, Verma modules, completion of Verma module with highest weight uh, lambda is going to be uh, the Verma module again with the highest weight being the shifted action uh, SI on lambda if lambda on HI is less than negative one and uh, the module is going to be complete uh, in the remaining cases. So I think this uh, helps with understanding things a bit. Uh, now that completion is so uh, intimately related with uh, Verma modules is part of the reason that uh, makes it, you know, interesting. So uh, if we take again in lambda and p plus uh, in general situation, you know, about Verma modules inclusions. So I'll have M S one lambda M S two on lambda and so forth. M S L lambda and coming down to W naught on lambda. So one can follow the lines regarding, uh, you know, simple, you know, reflections for, you know, inclusions to discuss completion. Uh, and, you know, which is to say that, you know, a, a Bruja ordering has something to do again with this, you know, with the picture itself. So just, you know, a little, you know, example for SL3, for this, students in the audience of so have oops, uh, for simple reflections S1, S2, and the corresponding lattice of Verma module inclusions is of course this one and so forth. Uh, so, um, so 
So we have, of course, you know, this is the very module inclusions. Now regarding completion themselves, if you start from, you know, the bottom, uh, then, you know, completing, uh, with, um, respect to, uh, with respect to one is going to bring you to the verbal module with highest weight S2, S1 on lambda and completing with respect to you know, uh, alpha two is going to bring you here. So then again, you know, completing with one and completing with two. So here, this already, you know, uh, brings an interesting question. What happens regarding uh, completions uh, for the for uh, two different reduced expression of um, of an element of a vial group? And so, Enright actually conjectured that it is going to follow with this example. You know, if we have uh, so the W wing and vial group. So two different expressions here. Uh, so he conjectured that corresponding successive completions are going to be uh, naturally isomorphic. Okay, and so on. However, he didn't have uh, that proof given, you know, for, for his construction. And of course, this is a very important, you know, question because uh, completion does have an SL2 nature. So in order to, for us to really reduce the whole setting to SL2, you know, this um, NRED conjecture better be true. So this was proved as, you know, a theorem by Deodar uh, the reason he was able, you know, to do that was because he gave uh, a concrete uh, construction of a completion. Then his construction was later, you know, generalized by Joseph to extend this to category O and uh, so forth. Uh, and Ben was working on generalization of Deodor's construction as part of uh, his thesis. And it seems that that remains something very dear, you know, to his heart, given that he, you know, wanted to, you know, go back to this and work on, I mean, he was actually already working on, you know, classification of Verma modules and projecting with, um, with me song, but, you know, he wanted to, you know, uh, bring me in so that we can, you know, discuss that in particular. Uh, so, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit slow with this iPad stuff. Uh -huh. is, it, is it properly obvious when you take the maximum amount of the, of the power group of the lattice output, or even in that case, it's basically too easy? Uh, well, nowadays there are actually simpler proofs because once that you have, you know, the result, then you can, you know, go ahead. But, you know, uh, it, it is really, you know, at the time it was really needed, you know, to do that. And like a lot of, you know, um, concrete calculations regarding that. So let me try to go uh, quickly regarding, you know, this construction that is the other construction that, you know, uh, Ben was uh, generalizing. Um, so, um, denote, so, so the other was actually considering an ambient category of category I. So uh, let's, you know, denote that by A. So these are going to be weight modules that are where U, Q minus action is torsion free. So category I of n rent is a subcategory here. And uh, so for a particular I, he defined what he later showed was a functor. And nowadays, you know, as I said, the, I mean, soon after there were some more direct constructions, but the root of all of them was this particular explicit construction that then, you know, as well, Ben was generalizing. So that's why I thought to, you know, go back and uh, look at that. Uh, so, and for a module in the category A, uh, denote by SM the set of formal symbols FI to minus RM. And equivalence relation uh, 
and uh, denote the set of the equivalence classes by di of m. Then uh, he showed that di of m is a vector, she has a vector space structure, and also uh, using uh, the following re result of his that for given z in g and uh, positive non negative integer r, there exists an element of universal enveloping algebra and non negative integer s such that f i s z is u f i to r. Uh, so using this, um, uh, this little lemma, you know, then he was uh, defining the action. Uh, as follows. where u and uh, s are given by the lemma above. And uh, this lemma actually, uh, it's obvious, you know, that it extends to enveloping algebra of g, uh, not just for g. Uh, so with this action, he shows that, you know, the i uh, of m is a g module and uh, also, you know, uh, defines for any homomorphism of G modules D I on F in the way that it takes Y minus N M into Y minus N F of M, uh, which is well defined. And he shows that this D I is a functor. So, uh, this is what's called uh, the other uh, alpha localization functor because if he was writing simple root as alpha, you know, just for simplicity, I'm, you know, using the I. Uh, and of course, as the name says, it is a localization functor. So you may have, you know, recognized uh, the construction. Uh, so one is really using uh, here uh, or set S which would be uh, the powers of fi. Uh, and, you know, so, you know, uh, once, you know, that this is done, it's quite, you know, simple to see that, you know, this is truly, you know, order localization, what one has uh, behind and uh, using this, you know, set, one has the order localization that I'm going to denote by U, F, I. Uh, and then of course, U of G would be a subalgebra of U, F, I. So uh, just an example, uh, let's go back to, you know, uh, simple case of SO2, uh, PB, uh, W basis of uh, U, F, I would be of the form F, uh, and let me not write subscript. So let's say um, I want to use I here, better not. Um, so J, K, E to P, such that J is an integer and the other two are positive, non negative integers. Uh, <clears throat> so the other localization functor is actually the localization as usually you know seen, and uh, it is uh, actually an exact uh, functor. Uh, so given that this construction was, you know, explicit, that's why, you know, um, it could have been generalized, you know, for other, you know, situations, you know, easily. So let me get back to, um, again, you know, the construction here, how uh, DIM was, you know, defined. Uh, and then for there, uh, one can easily see that even if uh, M is in the category I, the I of M it may not be in category I. Uh, so 
one defines that ci of m so pretty much creating nilpotence now it's actually easy to see that e uh, that ej's for j different from i are actually locally nilpotent on uh, di of m because of that ci of m is truly just uh, collecting those e invariance powers of e um, so this ci of m again defined by the other is uh, a g sub module of the i of m and in case that m is in category i then ci of m is also in the category i uh, and uh, for f morphism of g modules define uh, ci of f to be the restriction so ci is a functor on i uh, so <clears throat> uh, then you know uh, it turns out that this ci again you know shown by the other is a completion of m with respect to i and uh, uniqueness meaning if n is any other completion with respect to i to are uh, naturally uh, isomorphic so this justifies uh, the notation for ci of m uh, so uh, ci of m is truly you know uh, n rights uh, completion completion factor and of course going to um, the notation that is you know more uh, convenient uh, is you know uh, instead of you know defining this way one can just replace and say for a g module m uh, set li of m exactly the set as above uh, this the torsion sub module for some k then this li is a category is a functor on a g module category and uh, clearly uh, ci of m is actually li on di of m uh, <clears throat> so ci is actually uh, li functor applied on the localization factor so uh, Nowadays, uh, I mean, for a while, actually, uh, this is how often, you know, n rise functor is defined. So in this definition, it is truly using Deodor's completion explicitly. Uh, so and uh, CI is a uh, left uh, exact uh, functor. Uh, so some things regarding both localization functor and completion functor uh, is, um, they commute with tensoring with finite dimensional representations. Uh, and they have other, you know, uh, really uh, nice properties. I'm looking with respect to time. Uh, to skip some things. Okay, so uh, in a way, you know, uh, the alpha localization functor is a way to invert 
the element as usual localization is, uh, but you know, using it in this particular setting gave you know a way uh, for you know uh, generalizing the situation you know further and so on. Uh, so let me now um, mention even the time. Uh, let me now mention um, some things that you know uh, Ben was doing. So he uh, generalized. The other's construction uh, in a way so <clears throat> defining the notion of f categories and uh, f functors so let me talk a little bit about um, what he was you know doing there so for a Lie algebra g let me now for convenience denote by m uh, g the category of g modules and let f be an additive subcategory uh, such that uh, for uh, it is closed under tensoring. So for any two objects in F, the tensor product is in F, and also for any two morphisms F and G. Uh, so this is a morphism in F. Plus G uh, needs to be an element of F when regarded with respect to a joint action. Uh, so he used uh, this F in order to define an F category. So here, let's take a subalgebra of G uh, and let C be an additive subcategory of M. So this is M eta. Uh, then, um, for n, for easier reading, uh, then C is said to be an F category if it is invariant under uh, the functor Tf, which is tensoring with F. For every F in the category F. Uh, so that's uh, Ben's definition of F category. So for example, uh, the n right category I with respect to uh, simple root alpha, uh, is uh, an F category with F being category of uh, integrable modules or in finite case, finite dimensional modules. Now, uh, his definition for F functors is as follows. So suppose that uh, A and B are subalgebras of G and let correspondingly uh, a B, like script A, be a subcategory of A modules and be a subcategory of B modules. Uh, and looking at these to be F categories, but F categories defined just previously. Now, an additive functor tau from A to B is called an uh, intertwining functor. So as I said, um, it needs to be additive. And if there exists natural equivalence, IF, 
going from TF composed with data to tau tau data <laughs> and TF composed with tau and to tau composed with TF. And uh, tau is said to be F natural um, if the following diagram commutes. I'm simplifying things a little bit here. It should be like, you know, a family of um, the above intertwining func functors, but, you know, again, given the time, let me say it like this. So commuting diagram for each EF in F category and F morphism of F category and A in A. Um, well, I'm not going to manage much given, you know, the time. So he also defines uh, when, you know, uh, tau is going to be similarly, of course, using, you know, uh, commutative diagrams. It is distributive, the usual thing that one can uh, expect, and associative. And then finally, tau is said to be an F functor. if it is distributive and associative intertwining factor. Again, I'm simplifying a bit it's more precisely, one should say the pair of uh, tau and natural equivalences uh, defined above, but yeah, this should suffice for now. Uh, and so in the situation for an example, let's go simple, A and B, SL2 uh, with alpha, and then A, B at the corresponding category I, then tau being integrable modules. And then end right completion. Is an F factor. So now using the concept of F categories and F factors, um, Ben then established the sufficient conditions uh, in order to um, uh, generalize uh, the other conditions, so sufficient condition uh, to extend the action of an eta module on tau of uh, A. So this is what he was um, calling uh, his um, lifting uh, theorem. So, um, yeah, let me try finishing up a bit. Uh, so just I'll make, you know, a few uh, comments here. So he was, you know, going back to, you know, F categories and uh, F functors a lot. And this is nowadays, you know, especially interesting uh, in the, you know, concept of in connection with categorification uh, theory, you know, uh, so uh, in the case that um, F category is abelian, then corresponding, looking at the corresponding grotendic uh, uh, a ring, um, it um, is uh, naturally uh, um, the F module of corresponding rotating ring for, you know, uh, this category F. Uh, and so uh, his uh, construction um, is really interesting to be uh, considered in um, the framework of uh, categorification. Uh, so, um, 
uh, I'm not having time now to explain how he, you know, generalized, you know, uh, the other localization. I mean, I did say, you know, the method that he was using, but concrete, you know, construction was using um, larger sets. Uh, to be, you know, all sets and so on, and uh, showing the sufficient conditions, you know, for this. Uh, also, uh, so uh, with uh, Misong, he was starting to work on a categorification of verma modules and projectives in SL2. So that's why he, you know, was interested in, uh, you know, uh, me joining that project because of my, you know, previous work for branch crystals. So uh, branch crystals are, you know, as you know, crystal theory is mostly focused on crystal basis for integrable representations. So there is really, even nowadays, not much done for non-integrable representations. And, you know, of course, projectives and uh, vermas are non-integrable, especially if you want to look at the properly with respect to, you know, weight structure, not thinking about verma module just as, you know, uh, UQ minus. Uh, so, so, you know, for what, you know, I was doing previously was like, you know, making a uh, combination of, you know, uh, Verma module uh, being a BQ module being BQ being a Shivara algebra uh, in combination to be a UQ module, talking about quantum groups here, of course. Um, and then, you know, defining the notion of completion and then later with Chari and Mora defining branch crystals uh, for, you know, uh, projectives and uh, Verma modules, which uh, turned out to be um, a bigger and, uh, you know, undertaking in SL2 than we expected. Uh, with that, we were also calculating all tensor product decompositions uh, of, you know, tensor product of in decomposables in category over SL2. Um, so, uh, you know, and, you know, after that, I have been using uh, this topic to, you know, give to my students kind of calculations of highest weight vectors. And my student, Elizabeth Kret, you know, uh, working with me got some really nice expressions for these highest weight vectors. Now, this is of, it was of interest to Ben, you know, in his, um, you know, search for, you know, good categorification. And the reason why he wants to look at, you know, category I is because for some, you know, let me not getting into details, actually category I is not abelian and that is, that may be desirable for some things that he wanted, you know, to do with this. So anyway, so, you know, I just thought it would be appropriate for Ben's day to discuss uh, some of this work and, you know, uh, what the plans were, what, he, what his thoughts were. So I shortened it a bit uh, due to time and my apologies again for iPad, uh, it makes it a bit uh, slow. Thank you.